everyone welcome back to RTS and welcome back to another start to finish video because up today we're still playing with the load event it is day two so uh, let's get after it <laughs> yes and so for a day two the prompt that Alice gave us first thing this morning was Technicolor and so we are to scrapbook about a surprise or make a black and white page with color photos or use a uh, black and white pictures on colored paper so you could you know do vice versa and so it was all about a surprise and so the video today was so fun because there was a surprise in the video so that was just too fun and so of course with load I normally go with a story uh, because that is what I enjoy the most and so what I'm going to do is absolutely I am going to scrapbook about a surprise that happened at Disney uh, this time last year when I had to go by myself and did not enjoy it and I would not recommend going to Disney by yourself but anyways long story short uh, I went into a restaurant and I was just talking with a girl you know because that's what I do I talk and uh, she surprised me and wanted to gift me a complete meal <laughs> okay and so I'll talk more about that and so I'm going to do something a little different as far as picking up my supplies for this start to finish because I got asked to do this and so of course I love to do what my subscribers asked me and so of course these are my two photos and I'm going to do both of them now you'll notice that they are not the best photos I mean this one turned out pretty good but this one here this is a little stuffed animal that I bought my little girl when I was in Disney and he was my <laughs> He was my buddy for the day and so as I was going to different places in uh, Magic Kingdom I would take photos of him and send them to my little one and so he had fun that day uh, keeping in touch that way and so I think it's pronounced Pua P-U-A I think that's what it is and so that little that little pig <laughs> he was my sidekick for the day but it is a dark photo because it was uh, it was so hot that day and when I went in I tried to find a little bit of a shade and so I left that photo to represent uh, that I was seeking shade that day so but I'll talk about that in the layout so what do I have I have a <laughs> I have a meal from Columbia Harbor House and so it's one of our favorite places I went in really just to get a lemonade and this sweet girl wanted to uh, surprise me and she gifted me anything I wanted on the menu I mean that's just the magic of Disney and so what I'm going to do uh, for my papers is I am digging out one of my uh, boxes that I have page kits in and this was one that I uh, had that I was using and built with scraps and so uh, some of my subscribers said could you dig that box out and play with those scraps so that you did some page kits and so that's what I'm going to do and these are the two photos that are going to be my inspiration so right here and I will have this video linked below because talking about uh, building page kits and using scraps and that's exactly what I did in that entire video was build page kits using scraps fun to do this if I could do this every day of my life I would I love I love mixing and matching papers together and so of course I'm looking for a mood and feel that has to do with what well Columbia Harbor House is nautical you know that type of thing and so anything to do with sea uh, I had definitely have a yellow because the lemonade is what I go there for and of course uh, anything with blue yellow that's nautical so that's what I'm looking for okay but then you'll see in this photo here with Pua I think that's how you pronounce it little pig um, there's all these colors so really anything I pick will be fine it's just my mood and feel what I want to go with and so I will keep these photos uh, by <laughs> uh, that was just a fun little surprise and then isn't it funny how uh, you can meet a complete stranger and sometimes they treat you better than people you do in your own life <gasps> yeah uh, ring the doorbell for that one yeah <laughs> absolutely okay so I'm going to keep uh, this photo uh, close by and I'm thinking I don't want to take these out of the box just yet because there are small scraps. I don't want to lose anything. Uh, but then what I will do is just take my photo and say, hmm, is that what I want? I mean, that's pretty good right there. <laughs> I mean, honestly, right out of the box. Could it be that simple? Uh, I don't know. But that, that's, that is definitely a choice. And so that is how I'm going to do that. And, of course, I don't know if I'll have any room here. Oh, where's my lid? Right here. I will try to put my lid here to the left. And the ones I want, I'll put here to the right. Already running out of room, and I'm only four minutes into the video. <laughs> that's how it goes. Okay, and so, uh, let's see. And that's a little too flowery for me. 
so that it will be skipped. And so I will have the video link below. Uh, I think we have uh, five or six building page kits here on the channel, so definitely fun. Check those out. And then I talked about, and you may have saw this, it's about the Freaky Fast Friday formula that is hosted by the Scrap Room. I'll have that link below if you want to do some Freaky Fast pages. Yes, head over there to see what Rochelle and the girls do. Now, this is pretty, too. I like, you know, I love that. I could just use that right there. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to keep it together. I don't want to tear up my page kits. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty. Okay. And that's all I'm doing is taking my papers and I'm going to just go through them. And I enjoy this process, but I, I will not go through the whole box, meaning if I pick out two or three, I will pick from those two or three. I won't go through the whole box because that's not the purpose of building a page kit that you go through the whole box. You build page kits to uh, help with your process. Okay, very uh, too, a little too more uh, bright for me, so we'll keep on going. And I can skip that. That's too bright. Of course, I see some blue. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. Hmm, what do you think? Should that be a contender? Ooh. Yeah, I think that will be. Okay, so I'm looking at this one. And you can see this is just all page kits I just built with scraps. Love doing that. <laughs> of course, I just love building kits. And so, of course, uh, this is too pink, too flowery, too dainty. Uh, you can see that with the load prompt that Alice definitely gives you uh, a starting point and you can take it whichever way you want. <laughs> you can definitely, I could use black and white photos today. I could have used uh, uh, black and white paper today, which is what uh, some gals already have done. I mean, it's amazing to see how many layouts are already in the gallery. Too flowery. Of course, you know, florals is my thing, so <laughs> skipping, skipping skipping and see how I'm doing this really fast because I can already tell you some of this mood and feel is definitely definitely not what I want oh that's cute uh nah still not the mood and feel I'm going for okay I'm just putting these in my hand maybe to speed this up a tad but I have two here to the right so once I find another one you know and then I'll, I'll pick two or three and then just go from that Oh, uh, yes, that's a little too, uh, little girl. Well, okay, that's pretty. Ooh, see, I said about the yellow and blue. Well, yes. Okay, I like that. Okay, and I will not keep looking through the rest of that box because I like that. And I will stick all of these back in here. Okay, and you see how I have these separated with copy paper? That really, really helps me. Okay, and I will put these all away because I do not want to mess up anything. <laughs> okay, and then the lid goes on that, and that is how fast it is. <laughs> and I don't have to go look for paper for anything. Not a zip, nothing, other than a piece of cardstock, of course, but I keep that handy. Okay, and I know I'm going to use white, so why not grab one? Yes. Okay, so now that I have my papers picked out, and this does have to be somewhat of a fast page, love. <sighs> and it's only because of the yellow and blue. I mean, if I would have just had those two, I would have just picked that because that is definitely feels like nautical. And then I have these colors that is all represented in the photo. I have some orange and green, so I got a little bit of everything. Love that. Okay, now I will tell you, I don't know if I finished that thought. Since this is a load page, it will be a quick page, so there's no time to lollygag around. Okay, and so I have my papers, I have my cardstock, and then what I will do is, since these are scraps of papers and they are in block, I will probably just build a block design. Let's see how fast I could come up with one. <laughs> Could it be this fast? I don't know if that's what I'll end up going with. But what I'm saying is you see how quick it is to do a block design. Yes, and there is a mega video just posted about the go-to designs in the block series. And so what will I play with? I have my cardstock, I have my papers. What will I play with? Well, I will simply, I will pick out either some color drawers and I probably will go with yellow and blue because that's the nautical feel I want. And then maybe I've been wanting to play with some chipboard lately because this is all flat here. And so I could get out my chipboard. So hang on and we'll see what we come up with. <laughs> Let's see what we come up with here. 
Okay, so here are my color drawers. Okay, and if you're new to the channel, I have a video linked below and where I talk about these color drawers in length. Okay, and so I just picked three colors. What did I pick? I picked the orange, the yellow, and uh, the, the navy, the blue. Okay, and then I will, uh, I have a binder here somewhere because I was trying to find an anchor. <laughs> Because I thought that if I found an anchor, that would be my color scheme. So I picked a yellow here. And I thought if I could find an anchor or I could find a lemonade. And so that's what I will do in my chipboard binder here. As I have yellow because I'm trying to find a lemonade. <laughs> or any kind of drink. And I don't know if I'll find one. Well, <laughs> right there's one. I could, oh, yeah, I really could cut out that umbrella. But isn't... Oh, right there. See, lemonade. Oh, right there. Lem oh, Okay, right there, lemonade. That was too quick. I mean, I kind of wanted some chipboard, but I knew I would have something in yellow for lemonade because that's where we would put it. So um, I will look at my chipboard here just for a quick minute, and then I will come back with a finished page. Uh, now, right there is a drink. That would be fun, but I think that's supposed to be like an alcoholic drink, so uh, maybe not. But then also, too, while I'm looking at this, if I could find something that said surprise, you know, uh, that would be fun because that is what Alice gave us for a prompt. So I'm just looking real quick, you know, see what I can find. But I will look for something that says surprise, or maybe I'll just spell out surprise in my, in my thicker font, which uh, I haven't decided on that, but that's what I'll do. I might pick navy for that. Yes, maybe that's what I'll do. See, just making quick decisions because it needs to be a quick page because we are in the midst of the load event. Yes, and load stands for layout a day. So, okay. Uh, I will be back with a finished page from the Columbia Harbor House and I would give anything right now. Well, maybe not anything, but uh, I would pay $10 for one of those lemonades right now. Yes, I would. <laughs> okay, so come back, and I will have a finished surprise layout. Okay, I'm back with my finished page for day two of load. Absolutely love how it turned out. And so where did those papers land that I was uh, using from that building the page kit that I showed earlier? Well, right there was my yellow. Right here is my green. Right here is my blue. And then there was two other pieces. Oh, this one and one more. Let me find it. And what did I do? I decided I didn't want to use those, so I didn't. I just went with these three colors here. And sometimes it happens when you're building a page kit, especially if you're using scraps, you're putting them in. It doesn't mean you have to use them all, but they're certainly all there because I use this for my Mickey head on my Disney page. And uh, so let's uh, start talking how I simply did an L design, another L design. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. Three pieces of paper, uh, made an L design, and we'll be talking about that coming up soon in in our next go to design series uh, because up next is block and then after block is the L design and uh, someone had recently asked me how many videos will be in that I think after the block there may be two more videos I'm thinking it all depends you know sometimes I get to talking we don't know how long they go so uh, and then also with those pieces of paper I added in a brown journaling card because I needed a visual triangle with this brown down here and so then of course my photos are here I just put them on some white cardstock and something that's very fun and quick is that I just did some paper tearing added a little bit of something different because all I had was blocks of paper I didn't want another block of paper for my photo mat so I just did some paper tearing and you'll see some close-ups at the end and then of course added some stickers, add some die cuts, add some chipboard. And I wanted to show, as I'm going through those uh, binders that I showed earlier, I just pull out pieces that I think. And uh, I thought I had a lemonade or a glass in the cork. I didn't, but what I did find was a piece of cork that said enjoy, because that's exactly what the guest member said to me when she uh, surprised me with this meal. And so these are what I had pulled. I put everything on the wax paper, and then I just play with the wax paper, what's on the wax paper, and then whatever I don't use, I just put away, okay? And so then that is what I do when I get out those binders. I get out a piece of wax paper, anything I find that will work, all these little bits and bobs, things like that. I put them on the wax paper and then I play with the wax paper. So if you can see how fast a page like this can be, when I pulled out that 
page kit box, my paper choices were really quick. And then I put it to his binders and then my embellishment choices went really quick. And that's how you can make fast pages just using what's in front of you rather than go find some paper, go find some stickers, go find some chipboard, go find an anchor, go find a lemonade. It's just if you organize your items by how you scrap, big, big difference. So of course with my title, I wanted to get some twine on there. I wanted to get a banner of some sort on there because when I think of nautical, I do think of the banner, pennant shape, that type of thing. And so, of course, I took my thicker font that is, I have that right here, I believe. It is a, has like a little bit of a cork, not a cork, but a khaki tan look. And so I used that thicker. And how did I line those up? simply by using my thicker alignment guide and that is how I did that okay and then I'll show at the end how I actually did the twine with these letters if you want to hang on I know not everybody wants to watch that but I'll do a little mini tutorial how that all landed and how that all worked because I've learned a couple things over the years working with twine and also to those bows because I did in fact use lawn fawn twine but I'll talk more about that Okay, so then I took my photos and all I did was take a die cut and put stickers and stickers and stickers and some chipboard and just layered all of this up and I will have a close up at the end. And so I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, 15 pieces right here. And it's just stickers. It looks complicated, but all it is is layering a sticker because if you notice, I have a star with a word sticker on top of a lemonade, on top of a lemon slice, on top of anchors. And that is how you can build clusters, just layer, 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 and start with your bigger and go, go bigger. You know, as you build up, go smaller, okay? And so then, of course, my journaling is here, and I did that banner shape because you see right here, right here and then with this here I got that uh, banner flag shape pennant shape all in a visual triangle and the same with with my green I did that too and I wanted to show something would you believe after all these years I've used up one of these tiny attacher refills <laughs> you know I finally used a whole box that's yeah <laughs> Uh, and these were hard to find at one time, and so I did buy a couple for my surplus. Um, but yes, finally, after all these years, I used an entire box of these Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher staples. And so, of course, I used that on my band or my twine. I'll talk more about that. And then what else? Uh, let's see. I have something else, and look what's on my left. I have a border edge of a picket fence because again Nantucket nautical that whole thing and only because this was uh, in my Rascog nearby because I recently did a knockoff kit and you will see this picket fence make an appearance and so that's why it's on there and of course then Carol reminded me to get a hidden Mickey on there and so my hidden Mickey is up there so thank you Deb I think I'm gonna have to go back and add that to a couple, my last couple of Disney pages I kind of forgot to be doing that and speaking of Mickey heads, I wanted to say something. I wanted to show you something the next time you go to Walmart. At a Walmart, they have these, these uh, they call them epoxy stickers, but they're basically chipboard, but they do have an epoxy look to them. These are definitely by Disney. They're through in Hallmark, and they're where the cards are. They're not in the basically the craft aisle. aisle. They're where the cards are, and they're $3. And look how many of these uh, Disney Mickey heads you get. Love that. I bought a couple of these over the years, and I was just recently in Walmart in Osonga, and they still have these. So for $3, if you do Disney pages, yes, look at Walmart for those. <laughs> okay, and then also, too, I wanted to show if you like anchors and the nautical look, I wanted to show one more product, and I think this is a great deal. And this is by the Paper Studio. Let me get a piece of paper. And they're nothing but anchors. But look at the price. $2.49. Now, you know, even at that price, it's okay. But they always have that half off. So $1.25 for all of these anchors. They got just a tiny little bit of a uh, little bling to it. Doesn't stand out very much. But they're, um, what do they call them? They call them puffy. Yeah, they have a little bit of puff to them, but they're not huge. They're really, really nice. The downfall is they don't stay in, in this bag very well. But for $1.25, I'll put up with that. So I wanted to show those two products because I think they're really good deals, especially if you're doing Disney or anything with nautical, those two things right there. And so of course I love the load prompt because the, the load prompt was when have you been surprised? And when this cast member, 
uh, when she, uh, I went in there, just went in for a lemonade and just chatting with her and, and told her I didn't have my sidekick with me on this trip. And we were just talking about everything because you know how you have to stand in line for everything. Just talking up a storm. And she said, you know, I'm going to uh, surprise you and you can get anything you want on the menu today. It is on the house. And I thought, oh my Lord, I actually think I teared up because, you know, when someone gives you some kindness in your day, it just makes, it just makes your whole day better. And so that is why I snapped a photo of that and and I just was just tickled that she did that. And of course that with the low prompt of surprise, how perfect was it that I found a sticker that said surprise and I made sure that in my journaling, I put the word surprise and I put it in caps because that was a low prompt because that was a total surprise for a cast member to do that at Disney, you know, to get anything at free at Disney. Yes, that helps the wallet. <laughs> Does it not? Okay. And the, the downside was I wasn't really hungry because I had just went in for a lemonade, but I just, she was so happy to give it to me and I was so happy to receive that kindness. And so, yes, I just, I just thought it was nice. So then in my title, I did title it Columbia Harbor. Okay, because that is the name of the place. But the actual name is Columbia Harbor House. And when you're dealing with a title that is so long, because there's no way I could have got Columbia Harbor House. There's no way I could have got that in the title. It's okay to shorten your title. Okay, like I did. I, I deleted the word house or, you know, I didn't put it on there. But in your journaling, you can reflect the entire title. So in my title, it says Columbia Harbor House. Okay, so that's how you can get away with a big title or a big name. Just shorten it a little bit, but in your journaling, mention the whole name if you want to. Okay, so that is all I have for today for Load Day 2. Absolutely love how it turned out. And hang on just for a minute if you want to see how I did this twine. Okay, but if not, come back because Day 3 will be coming in just a minute. Okay, so now let's talk about this uh, title using these stickers and this alignment guide and just having fun and I broke out some lawn fawn twine which I will tell you I do not care for however I'm going to use it because it wasn't the cheapest and um it's, it's just a very harsh twine it's not soft but it does add some dimension to a page and I did a couple things different with this time. So maybe instead of me passing it over in my boxes, I think I may uh, maybe in starting to warm up to it. I'll put it that way. Okay, so let's get cracking on this title. How did I do it? What did I use? Because I need some glue. I got a stapler. Oh, yes. And some scissors. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about that. Okay, so if you don't want to see this, um, just come back another day. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, move this here to the side. And so let's just pull some of these. Okay, and so I'm just going to pull any type of letter whatsoever, okay, but I'm going to lay something here for a minute, okay, because I don't want to forget why I have that question mark there. Okay, so say I'm just spelling out the word, uh, well, let's just do happy. How's that? Because, yes, we're doing the load event, and the load event makes me happy. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, of course, I'm using my thicker alignment guide. Now, this one is called the Wave. It is in one of the sets. So far that I know of, there's just two sets of these thicker alignment guides, and some of my subscribers said they have been finding these at Tuesday morning what a deal so definitely look into that and then also to hobby lobby uh someone told me they were on uh, clearance there okay so i'm just spelling out the word happy okay and i'm putting them on this thicker alignment guide okay so i'm using the outside thicker or outside i'm using the outside grid line because that's all this is is a bunch of grids but yet it follows this form of this wave and so that is how i did my title of columbia harbor okay and then what you do is uh, once you put this where you want it okay now keep in mind these are thickers they don't stick to anything but what you don't want it to stick to. We all know that. So uh, be careful when you're moving this around. You have to be a little delicate with it because they will still pop off. And so if you put it where you want it, say I'm going to put it up here. I'll just put it in the middle of this page. Okay. And then what I do is I simply take a few off at a time. Now you have to remember one thing. Even with these thicker alignment guides, when you pull these thickers away, they still, maybe one will happen. Oh, that didn't do too bad, but they still will shift a little bit. 
okay? And don't worry about that. As long as you get the general consensus of where you wanted it, it's just the way when you're pulling items off of this alignment guide, they still will shift a little bit, okay? But you can tell in my layout, there's no way I could have got that wave without this alignment guide. Love it, love it. It's one of the best tools I think I got in the last couple of years, okay? So there is my little bit of a wave. And of course, you know, they have other shapes. They have this one too. This is in the second alignment guide set. This, um, it comes like this and there uh, is that that's the large circle and sometimes these have a protective coating so um, make sure you peel that off because then you will see this grid a tiny bit better okay so how do I do this twine because I'll show you my layout I have twine going the whole way around the top of this uh, banner and then I have some bows and then I have some curls. So how did I do the bows within the twine and how do you gauge how much twine you need and where do you put it? And I'm gonna show you a couple shortcuts. <laughs> yes, because these bows are not part of that twine. Now I'll show you what I did. Okay, so of course uh, I'm gonna use Lawn Fawn here. And so I absolutely adhere my thickers where I want them on the page. I mean, as far as using that alignment guide, that's one thing, but then the next thing I do is I absolutely take my quick dry and I glue these down before I start playing with twine. And so once these are glued down, I have that title, and then I start playing with the twine, and then I come up here and I figure out where I'm going to put it, okay? And that's where I'm going to put it. So then what I use for that is that I use this Tombow glue. I love this for twine. Yes, that's why I said I use this for embellishments more than anything else. And so then I would run a bead of glue right up along that edge right here. I just run a bead of glue, maybe this will be better, uh, right along all the top of those, okay? Now, I really didn't want to get any glue on there. Oh, my goodness, but I did. Let me get a tissue here, okay? And so once I run a bead of glue the whole way up there, okay, then what I will do is then I will take the twine and it'll lay there, okay? And then I use a, a pointer, okay? And I'll talk about these in just a minute. And then I just push that up there. Okay, and it'll stay in place with all that. Okay, that's what it'll do. It'll stay in place. And that's all you do. Just run a bead of glue. Love this Tombow for this because it dries clear, but yet you can st still see what you're doing. And it seems like it adheres really fast. Okay, I could try the quick dry, but I like this because I, it gives me some movement. Okay, because the quick dry dries quick. Okay, and so then, of course, I would leave extra for the tails that I want. Okay, so let me just come here and cut this. Okay, maybe I should run a bead of glue, but then I don't want to ruin those stickers because I, I, I want to, you know, that's all I have. Okay, so this is all adhered, and then uh, I'll show you in the layout what I do with these tails. Okay, so that's how you do that. Now, how do you do it that if you want to add some bows? Well, just run your one piece of twine around the top of that banner, okay? And make sure you leave some extra for tails, okay? And then once that's dry, okay, then you can come back. And then you can start adding bows, okay? Because I put that twine the whole way around there and these tails, okay? And then I, I, I heared those tails using this Tombow and I would just pick up a little piece at a time, put a little piece of glue there, pick up another little piece and then see this little piece right here? It's sticking up and so I would just take up a little piece at a time, pick up that twine very gently and then push it down there Okay, and then again, using one of these little nail guides as a little bit of help to get that on there. Okay, and then also too, as a cleanup, because you'll get a little bit of extra glue and you use one of these uh, nail guides. Okay, and this is what a, they're called orange sticks or nail care sticks. I think I got these at Christmas tree shop or something for 97 cents. And so they're just little, they have a beveled edge on one side and a pointy, and it just helps you get some placements with your embellishments. Okay. So then you can leave these tails floating in the wind or you can glue them down. Now with my tails, I like them to be glued down because I don't like things to shift in my page. But you see how these, these are not glued down. So I have a little bit of both. I have some glued down, some not. It's up to you. And then also to, let me point here, is it right here? And right here, I use my uh, Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher, and that's another way that you can get the twine on your page, is just using your little Timmy, okay? You don't have to glue them down, I just do that. Because sometimes, see, I want that movement, and sometimes I want that movement, and then right here, I didn't glue those down, because there's no way I'm going to be able to get those down. I could, but I'm not going to. So I have a little bit of movement, and some are actually adhered, 
Okay. Now to do those bows at the end is that I would just take another piece of twine. Okay. And then I'm simply just making a bow and everybody knows how to make a bow. If you don't let me know and to make a bow, I'll show that again. All you do is just make a loop. Okay. Just make a loop. It's like you're tying your shoes. Okay. Now I'm left-handed for some of you. That's probably backwards. And this is what you come up with. Okay. You say, well, that doesn't look like much of a bow. <laughs> and I'm going to show you what you do. When you're working with twine, you just pull on these loops of your bow and then you play with your tails. Okay. And then you play with your loops and then you play with your tails and keep going with that same order. You pull the, the loops tight, play with your tails, play with your tails, loops, tails, until you get the bow that you want. Very, very simple. And then what I did was I just simply took this bow, just how I made it like that, and I put it at the end of my banner, just like that. Now, this twine from Lawn Fawn is very coarse. It's not very pliable. So how can you make it pliable? And I showed this in another video is that when you have twine or jute or anything like that, you can take it and wrap it around a pencil and that will break up See what I'm saying? That'll break up that, uh, the, it breaks up the fibers. And so then it's a little bit easier to play with. And then, uh, what else did I want to say? Then I took this bow and I used this super glue gel. It really, really worked fantastic on these bows because all I did was put a drop of glue right here behind that knot. That's all I did. All this, all the loops, Look at that. None of it's glued down. One spot of this super glue gel right behind that knot on that bow. And that is how I did that there and then there. Of course, I got in a little bit of that green too to bring up some of the green here. And that just helps me finish my uh, banner. Now, how can you separate words when you're doing a title like this? Because you have the word Columbia and then I have the word Harbor. So what I do is that I will sometimes... I will take one of these from the sheet that I normally wouldn't use. And so, of course, the question mark or the exclamation point or the ampersand, things like that. Usually the question mark. And then I will put a sticker over that so you won't know it's a question mark. And then you can separate your words that way. But as I was pulling some chipboard, I saw this other piece of yellow chipboard here. And it was in the shape of a banner. So I just put that in the middle, put a sticker over top of it. And it just looks like it's part of the title, but it is actually a different piece of chipboard. So, but you can do it two ways. You can use some of these, even these numbers, if you don't want to use the numbers or these, the punctuation, sometimes they're not always easy to use. You can put them in the middle of your words or what if you have a short word and you just have one word, you could take some of these uh, punctuation that you wouldn't use, put them at, say, if I would do, I'll just show you right here on this piece of paper. Say I could put a question mark there in front of happy and then something else. It doesn't have to be a question mark. I'm just using that as an example. And I put that at the end and then I could put a sticker or an enamel dot or what do I have? I have some hearts. I'll just use this. And then you can make these other shapes part of your title. Okay. Of course I would do that a little bit better. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? What take those punctuation or those extra pieces you may not use and make your title just a little bit bigger, add some embellishments. And then of course, along with your twine, <laughs> yes, just makes for a very, very pretty title. And again, to go with the mood and feel of nautical, yes, <laughs> tell me it doesn't get any better than that. Yes. So that is how I use that Lawn Fawn twine, but you can use any twine, any floss that you have. The Lawn Fawn, and I don't even know if they make it anymore. If you know whether they still make Lawn Fawn twine, uh, please list below. But it is very coarse and it's just, it's kind of rough really. But I'm going to use it. I have it. It's not going to go to waste. And then, of course, you do not have to worry about having extra to make your bows. Just add them after you do your twine. That's all you have to do is just add them. And then you do need a strong glue, so glossy accents or the super glue gel, which I'm in love with this product. Okay? But to get that twine laid, and you really don't even see that line of glue because that's why I like this Tomo Aqua in the blue. That's why I like that. Okay. And, oh, one of my subscribers said to me... <laughs> When I was talking about adhesive, I have that video linked below. She said, all these years, I didn't even know that this had a brush tip. Well, they got a broad tip at the end. Yes, but you know, I've never used it, but it's there. 
I don't know. I've never used it. So that is how I did the banner uh, that says Columbia Harbor. How I incorporated that in my title. How I got the nautical feel in with this banner, the pennant shaped twine, the angers. Just had fun. So thank you, Alice, for day two of load. Having fun already. Got a hidden Mickey in there. Thanks to Deb's reminder. <laughs> Yes. Okay. And my journaling is complete. Look how I uh, two for two. Yes. So, you know, uh, day three for load will be coming up. And of course I'm working on my pages a little bit behind because you know, when the weekend's here, I don't have time to scrapbook on the weekends. So I think I may combine page three and four. I thought load day three and four. I think I may. So that is all I have for today. I hope that little tutorial was helpful because I know when I started to learn how to do banners, I wanted to know how everybody got that twine on there. <laughs> and the key is to do the twine after you would hear those letters. Because if you do it before, because sometimes uh, you may want to put the, the thicker on top of the twine, it makes too much lump and bump, and then they don't adhere well. That's what I found. So yes, it, adhere your thickers or whatever alpha you're doing, and then once that's dry and on there secure, add your twine at the top. That's the easy way to do it. You know, I'm all about the hack version around here. Yes, <laughs> because we have another story we want to tell, and that's what we'll be up for tomorrow for day three of load, another story to tell. So that's all I have for today. Come back to RTS because... You never know what we're going to learn. Bye.